Hello, welcome to the DraftKings Daily Trot. I'm Big Italy 42. As you know, he's Josh Shepardson at Beachhead 50. Talking about tonight's action and your top two pitchers on the mound, Clayton Kershaw and Jose Fernandez, both in good spots. You get Fernandez against an Atlanta team, missing their best hitter in Freddie Freeman. They don't strike out a ton, but like you mentioned for the show, we both know Jose Fernandez cares not who uh, who strikes out a lot. He'll strike you out if he wants to strike you out. And yep. uh, Clayton Kershaw gets the Pirates, who have some individuals who hit lefties well, but as a team, they strike out a ton against lefties. And I don't remember the last time Clayton Kershaw gave up an earned run. So step aside, Zach Greinke. This is this is now the uh, the new Dodgers streak, and I mean he has just been so ridiculously good. So if you can make it happen, the extra two grand. I mean Clayton Kershaw is easily your top option tonight. I believe his current streak is 37 scoreless innings. I know over the last month he's made four starts totaling 34 innings, and they've all been scoreless. So uh, he's from another planet right now. There are actually some value arms that both you and I like tonight, so it can happen. There are also some value bets out there. So uh, I'm in cash games, at least, I'm definitely locking in Kershaw. But I think that $15,000 price tag could serve as a deterrent in uh, GPPs as well. So Kershaw's my top arm. Fernandez is my two, but Fernandez is a really nice alternative. I mean, when he's your number two option, uh, the pitching slate's pretty good, I would say. And, I mean, we're not even talking about guys like Jacob DeGrom, Dallas Keuchel, Sonny Gray, Garrett Cole. I mean, this is this is a crazy loaded uh, slate, but, I mean, your top arms are your clear top arms. And uh, since I did mention some value arms, let me get to a couple of those. I like Kevin Gosman at Los Angeles tonight. Uh, $5,400 is coming off of back-to-back starts in which he's gone at least seven innings. Uh, his only real messy start of the year was against the Twins when they knocked him around. But uh, as a starter this year, he's got a, a FIP under four and an XFIP just over. Uh, his, swing, his strikeout rate does not line up with his swinging strike rate, which is 10.6% as a starter. So I do think there's some strikeout upside that maybe you wouldn't otherwise recognize just looking at his strikeout rate. Doesn't have to give you a big performance to deliver on the $5,400 price tag and uh, does bring that average salary if you pair him with with Kershaw down significantly. You're looking at uh, just over 10000 for each of your pitchers and you can certainly flesh out a pretty nice lineup around them, but Another value arm that I'm looking at down there, $6,400 Daniel Norris against the Red Sox. They struggled against lefties this year. They remain without some key pieces in that offense. And uh, Norris was very good in his first uh, start with the Tigers. Had some issues with walks at the minor league level, but still managed to post a solid FIP uh, while, while pitching there. So uh, turning in a good year, has strikeout out upside. I mean, haven't seen it quite as much this year as we have in seasons past, but he was uh, mowing m- minor league hitters down the last few years, so we know he can he can miss some bats. And uh, again, it comes down to that price point, the fact that he's got a soft matchup, and uh, you got to have some way to offset uh, Kershaw and, and Fernandez if you're going to use them. And that, that middle tier price uh, SP that I like a lot is Andrew Heaney at 8300 The uh, O's struggle a bit with left-handed pitching, and they struck out quite a bit against lefties this year. They own a uh, strikeout rate of 22.3% against left-handed pitching this year. Uh, Heaney strikeout rate's a little lower than you'd expect if you look at a swinging strike rate, which is exactly league average. Should probably be striking out about 20% of the batters he faces, which is a, a slight uptick from what he's doing. And I mean, he's been excellent this year. He hasn't allowed more than two earned runs in any of his starts. He's pitched six innings or more in six or seven starts. So you're getting a consistent pitcher who has a nice matchup tonight. And he's a home favorite. Yeah, and I mean, we're including a game at Colorado, too, where he only gave up two earned runs. So, you know, he's yep. done it in some tough environments, too. So... Um, I, I'm on board with that. Another cheap guy I like is Aaron Nola. He's pitched well since he came up $6,000 against San Diego. I mean, I'll target just about any pitcher against San Diego right now. That team is just god-awful. And, I mean, he hasn't been setting the world on fire necessarily, but 6-6 six, six, and three strikeouts his last three games, uh, six innings, seven and two-thirds, and five innings pitched. Did give up four and runs against the Cubs, but that was the game he made it almost through the eighth inning. So, I think uh, his, his only struggle so far is he has allowed four home runs. But this is a San Diego team that not only is it in Petco Park, but, I mean, they, they can't seem to hit home runs or score runs anywhere. So I think he's a, a fine, cheap option as well. I'm in agreement. Uh, one other guy I'll mention I like in tournaments is uh, Lance Lynn. I feel like with all these huge tur- uh, names on the mound, all these aces, Lance Lynn's the guy that, you know, he's not a dominant guy, but this is a Milwaukee team that despite their explosion last night, which was mostly – 
Chris Bryant, his two home runs and six RBIs. I mean, Lance Lynn's a guy that definitely has upside. Milwaukee, as you know, a very depleted offense now, missing some key bats they got rid of at the, the deadline. And Lance Lynn's got some big upside, too. I mean, you look at his numbers on the season, he's got some, some very solid numbers overall um, as far as strikeout rate goes. Um, up near the, not the top tier with the other guys, but 25.2% strikeout rate, 0.67 home runs per nine. That's your biggest concern is a guy who gives up too many home runs at Miller Park, but he does a good job of keeping the ball in the park. So I think he's going to be a very low-owned guy that on most slates would have a decent amount of ownership. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it just speaks volumes about the depth of today's starting pitching options and just how good the top, top tier is. So I like him as a nice swerve off of the uh, more popular pitchers and he's going to give you a lot of money for some of these big bats that people just won't be able to afford with the Kershaw's and Fernandez's of the world so if you're looking to gain some traction there maybe he keeps it relatively close to scoring he doesn't have to exceed Kershaw or Fernandez uh, look at it this way if he and whoever you use that's almost six thousand dollars more at hitter exceed the production of Kershaw and those bats it's a net win. You're looking for net wins. Good You're not point. looking at necessarily at individual matchups at all at all points. So uh, Lynn can definitely keep it relatively close and close that gap with, with what you can do with that, that almost $6,000 that you've got left over. Yeah, exactly. You're going to want to get some, some bats tonight, um, but we also have found a lot of values. I think a good place to find value tonight is catcher. There's no, no one who really stands out as an elite top option. I mean, you've got... Brian McCann still listed his day to day. He may sit again tonight against the knuckleballer and Dickie. You normally would love him as a lefty against a righty at home. Um, Russell Martin gets Nathan Eovaldi, who's been pretty good against righties this year, so really not jumping out of my seat to play him. So you and I were talking for the show. We're looking at getting some cheap guys in here, and there's quite a few in decent spots um, down here in the cheap, the bargain bin. Uh, Wilson Ramos being one of them. He's uh, three thousand dollars against Jorge De La Rosa, who. Has been better against righties this year, but a guy who throughout his career has not been good against righties, still giving up a lot of home runs. Uh, a lot of these Washington bats, much cheaper than I think they rightfully should be tonight. Yep. Yep. And uh, staying in that, that D.C. area, we'll go we'll go down the beltway to Baltimore. Uh, they're not at home tonight, but I still like Matt Wieters against Andrew Heaney. Uh, he's hit left-handed pitching well. He's in good form, uh, hitting well over the last couple weeks. So I like Wieters in a road tilt for 2800 That's That's a good pro point. Uh, Jesus Montero doesn't have the easiest assignment with uh, Cole Hamels, but Hamels has struggled with... Uh, with retiring hitters in his last handful of games. He's got the no-no on his resume, but he's also given up five earned runs or more in three of his last four starts, so he hasn't exactly been uh, locked in. And Montero's been crushing left-handed pitching. He's crushing it at the minor league level, and he's actually hit left-handed pitching really well at the big league level, even in his limited time. So that is one thing we do know that Jesus Montero can do is uh, knock around left-handed pitching just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do tonight is save money. And you get some significant upside with these guys here at, uh, at catcher tonight. Um, one more guy. Um, I don't know that he has any sample size, actually, against any knuckleballers. But if Brian McCann sits out again, John Ryan Murphy at $2,300, if you just have to save the extra couple hundred dollars, which you might need to do to get some top arms, I don't think he's uh, a terrible punt option tonight either. No, and as you said, I mean, it's, it's not exactly the uh, most loaded position. And there's certainly upside there, but there's no uh, chalk that you're really fearing fading, even in, even in cash games. So yeah. uh, that's a good call. Yeah, and I love that about tonight. There's not a lot of chalk, so you can get creative with your lineups. A lot of ways you can go tonight. So best lineup really will win tonight, and uh, which is not always the case with some, uh, some obvious plays. Uh, first base options. There are some t pricey options you like. I like Jose Abreu quite a bit against Edison Volquez. Volquez has been okay against right-handed batters, but Abreu really started to turn around, show more power than he did earlier in the season. Um, other than him, as far as expensive options, I mentioned not really targeting Eovaldi with right-handed batters, but if I'm going to target him with one, probably going to be Edwin Encarnacion at $4,500. Um, on a nice stretch here, again, homers and back-to-back -back games. We've seen this from him before. He struggles for a week or so, starts to see the ball better, and then he just goes on these tears where he just destroys the ball. So I like him as a tournament option. Not a guy I'll be paying up for in cash, though. Yeah, uh, another pricey tournament option is uh, Joey Votto against Chase Anderson. Anderson struggled before his disabled list, and if he's not right when he comes off tonight, 
Uh, the Reds are certainly capable of punishing him, and Votto is one of those options that, that can do that. And his price tag is going to be prohibitive to uh, guys that are, are using Kershaw and Fernandez tonight to, to fit him on these rosters. So I like him. Going to the complete opposite end of the spectrum, a uh, guy that I like in GPPs, namely uh, Justin Smoke. Uh, not not crushing right-handed pitching by any stretch, but Evaldi struggles in a big way with left-handed batters, and uh, left-handed batters absolutely love Yankee Stadium, and for good reason. And uh, even though Smoke hasn't exactly lit the world on fire this year, he does continue to hit fifth typically when he's in the lineup. So you get a good lineup spot behind these on-base machines in uh, Toronto, or for the for the Blue Jays, not in Toronto at Yankee Stadium tonight. Just to be clear. Um, Smoke looks pretty good at 2,500. Then you've got the, the middle tier uh, of bats where there, there's a, a number of options. Uh, one of those nationals that you alluded to, uh, Ryan Zimmerman, $3,400, gets uh, De La Rosa, who, uh, as you noted, he's been better against righties this year than in years past, but that's relatively speaking. He's still getting knocked around by right-handed batters. Got to like those right-handed nationals. Zimmerman also third base eligible, which is worth noting. Uh, Victor Martinez, 3500 We know he's coming off of a double-dong game. And he gets Joe Kelly. I mean, I can't think of a better uh, greeting to follow up that that double dong game than facing Kelly. Kelly's been awful this year. Uh, that talk that he had of winning an AL Cy Young uh, looks more <laughs> laughable by the day. But uh, I, I like Victor Martinez a bit tonight. And then my favorite play at first base, uh, price considered, matchup considered, everything else. Uh, Prince Fielder at 3,900. He's been crushing right-handed pitching this year. He's really been back in a big way. And uh, Hisashi Iwakuma not the easiest assignment by any stretch of the imagination, but Fielder has really hit well this year, and uh, anytime you can get him against a right-handed pitcher, I I like it quite a bit. Yeah, I I like that call a lot. And then one more guy I'm going to throw out, uh, Ryan Howard against James Shields. Shields has had troubles with the long ball, troubles with lefties as well um, this season. He's allowed 14 home runs and a 372 wobble to lefties, and Ryan Howard actually seen the ball pretty well recently. So that Philly offense, all priced cheap, but not priced for their recent production, so... I think they're an interesting no. stack. Once again, I'm not going to say I'm going to full-blown stack them, but some pieces here and there for cheap for sure. Uh, second base options. I know you and I are both a fan of uh, Ian Kensler. We talked about Joe Kelly. We can talk about him all day and laugh at his uh, his jokes all day if we want, but Kensler's been hitting the ball well recently. He's kind of expensive, which should keep his ownership down, so I like that a lot. I'm a big fan of D. Gordon. Lefties against Julio Tehran, always a, a great way to go. He is a fly ball pitcher, but... Well, I want a 380 Woba to lefties. And D. Gordon, especially if A.J. Przinsky's in there, we know A.J. Przinsky is just an absolute, I don't know what word. Think of an awful word to describe something, your worst adjective. Um, he's allowed 51 stolen bases and 70 starts this season. So if D. Gordon gets going, I'm probably going to play in my cash games if I can because if he gets on base, no one's going to stop him from taking two, three, four bags. <laughs> Yeah, it's off to the races if he gets on base. Uh, right in that same price point, I like Ben Zobrist a bit. Uh, he's been hitting second for the Royals. We know Dank struggles in a, uh, mightily with right-handed batters, so uh, the switch hitting Zobrist should give him some problems tonight. But this is a good position to find some bargains at. There are two names that I really like a lot. Anthony Rendon against uh, Jorge De La Rosa, second and third base eligible, just 3,200. He's been hitting second for the Nationals. Um, not exactly lighting the world on fire since his activation from the disabled list. I mean, it's been an injury-riddled year for him, but he is a well-above-average hitter against lefties. De La Rosa struggles with righties. Not going to continue to beat that dead horse. You get the point at this point. Um, but Ruggie Odor at 31, I like quite a bit as well. Yeah. Uh, he's just absolutely crushed the ball since his activation from or I'm sorry, not activation from uh, AAA, his, his recall from AAA. Uh, they sent him down there to make some adjustments, and boy, has he made adjustments. Uh, he's, he's just been on fire. He hits in a great lineup spot for a talented offense, and we know with you, Akuma, that when he struggles, occasionally it's with the long balls because that splitter's not down, it's just sitting up. And uh, Odor can put a little bit of a charge into the ball, so I really like him a lot. And one more bargain name that I'll throw out there, uh, speaking of guys in good lineup spots, Scooter Jeanette's been leading off since the uh, fire sale there in, in Milwaukee. And at $2,700, you don't love the matchup with Lance Lynn, but Lynn is right-handed. If you're going to get the better of him, you're most likely going to be a left-handed batter up there. And uh, Miller Park offers him some pretty good park factors. So at $2,700, you certainly do worse than punting him. If uh, if you're looking to spend heavily a pitcher, that, that's a good way to get some salary relief, I think. Yeah, I mean, anytime you get a leadoff hitter that's a decent hitter, platoon advantage type of thing like that, I like that. And then uh, two more Philly guys, both guys multiple eligibility. Cesar Hernandez, 
second base shortstop at 28. And then same price, Odubel Herrera, second base outfield eligibility. Um, Herrera's been quietly just very consistent. I think he's an awesome cash game play tonight if you're paying up for a couple pitchers at under 3K. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as you noted, the Phillies have been swinging a hot hot bats lately. Uh, they've been a completely different team since the All-Star break, and uh, I tend not to, to jump on too many hot streaks, but when you get players that are seeing the ball well, hitting the ball well, you get them on the cheap like that, especially at positions where it's not loaded with talent. We're not sacrificing talent at first base or the hot corner in the outfield. Um, it's it's a viable strategy to grab some of these bats that are playing well right now um, at their reduced prices. Definitely. And then uh, speaking of the hot corner, we mentioned a couple guys already. Um, Anthony Rendon and Ryan Zimmerman, who you can play here for yep. cheap. Uh, I love Matt Carpenter in this matchup at 4900 but he's really expensive. So probably more of a GPP option, unfortunately, for me at that price. And then a uh, guy I know you really like, Miguel Sano, against uh, – Yep. Cody Anderson. I mean, both of the Andersons just not very good, um, and especially Cody. I mean, he's just not striking anyone out. I mean, giving up contact to everyone. And Miguel Sano doesn't get cheated when he makes contact. He makes hard contact all day long. Exactly. I mean, that's the type of pitcher you want to target Miguel Sano against is a pitcher that struggles to miss bats because Sano's biggest problem is that he strikes out quite a bit. When he's not striking out, he's showing off uh, some of the best raw power in the game. And that's not just for young players. That's that's for all players. The guy can hit the ball a mile. Um, speaking of guys who can hit the ball a mile, I like Alex Rodriguez against R.A. Dickey. Decent BVP numbers. Um, I'm obviously not a big BVP guy. This is probably maybe the first time you've heard me cite that on the podcast. But with the knuckleball... Uh, you're limited on what data you can use. It's not like just looking up every average right-handed pitcher. It's it's a unique pitch, but A-Rod doesn't seem to struggle with it. He's hit Dickey a little bit in his career, so I do buy into him as a viable option, especially at Yankee Stadium where, I mean, power gets amplified there, so you got to like that. Um, Mike Franco, it's a righty-righty matchup with James Shields, but Franco's been hitting the ball, not overwhelmed by the spotlight of the big leagues, makes a lot of contact, has uh, above-average power, so I like him quite a bit and uh, not a lot in the bargain bin just the two names that you mentioned from the Nationals that we highlighted at all positions and that's Ryan Zimmerman and Anthony Rendon but to be honest third base is the position that I like the two of them at the most anyway so uh, definitely want to bring them back up again yeah certainly on board with you there uh, shortstop options Troy Tulowitzki we mentioned that you've already better against righties but obviously um, he's, he's still your best option at shortstop uh, Carlos Correa if you can afford him gets a tougher matchup even than that against Sonny Gray, that Oakland. But, I mean, if we're talking about a guy that makes hard contact, Carlos Correa, my God, the guy just destroys the ball. So, I mean, he he's my favorite play, actually, if I'm paying up. I, I don't know that I'll have the money to do that because there's a lot of pitchers I want. And you're going to set yourself behind pretty quick, probably even GBPs if you pay down for two pitchers and even one of them doesn't produce. So, um, yep. other shortstops, Johnny Peralta, you got to like him. Mr. Consistency at $4,100. But what I'm trying to do at shortstop, as you probably noticed by now, is save money. So I already mentioned Cesar Hernandez at 2800 He's one of my favorites that I'm, I could pay down for. But another guy, um, actually at that same price tag, Jose Ramirez against Mike Pelfrey. Guy's been hitting at the top of the Indians order. Not a particularly good offense right now, but uh, he's a decent hitter for that price tag. Yeah, and I mean, those are two very viable punt options, and you're going to have to punt some places tonight. Uh, catcher is my preferred position, but if you're using Kershaw in any kind of SP2 that's not a bargain SP2, you're going to have to punt more than one position, and shortstop looks like a decent place to do it, but really do like the price point of Tulo at 43 like Peralta, like you mentioned. Uh, another name that I'm looking at is uh, a little bit cheaper, might make it a little bit easier to budget uh at this position, thirty-seven hundred dollars. Xander Bogarts against Daniel Norris. He's hit left-handed pitching really well. Continues to hit in a really good lineup spot for the Red Sox. And teammate Hanley Ramirez at forty-one hundred is very affordable as well. Yeah. Not having his banner year against lefties, but he's still got an ISO north of two hundred against them. So gotta like that kind of power. Um, I do like Norris a bit tonight, but if there are some guys that are going to give him trouble, it's probably going to be Hanley and Bogarts. Yep, I completely agree with you there. Um, especially, I mean, Hanley, as long as we can have this shortstop eligibility, who knows how long it's going to last. I mean, you take advantage of that where you can against the lefty. Yep. Um, outfield options, I love Mike Trout. Birthday aside, um, he's way too cheap, $4,900 for the best player in all of baseball. I'm taking advantage of that where I can against uh, Kevin Gausman, who has pitched well, but, I mean, Mike Trout's still going to win that battle. If anyone in that lineup is going to win that battle, more often than not, it's going to be Trout. Um, but I know there's another uh, power hitter you like despite a tough matchup. A little bit cheaper. 
Yeah, forty seven hundred dollars, Nelson Cruz. I mean, when he gets a lefty, you sh- you need to be on alert. Uh, he's crushed them this year. He's crushed them throughout his career, to be perfectly honest. And it doesn't matter what lefty it is at this point. If Cruz is in there, uh, or when Cruz is facing a lefty, I- I'm getting him in my lineups. And at forty seven hundred dollars, you almost have to like the fact that he has a tougher matchup against Hamels because it likely served to depress his price tag a little bit tonight. I guess most lefties you're going to see that price tag north of five thousand. Not the case tonight. Uh, I really like John Danks, or I'm sorry, Lorenzo Kane against John Danks is a high-end GPP uh, swerve because he is the same price as Cruz. I expect his ownership to be far less than uh, that of Cruz. But uh, Danks struggled mightily with right-handed batters this year throughout the recent years. And uh, Kane really exploding in a big way, tapping into power we haven't previously seen from him. Still a stolen base threat with 19 on the year, so you got to like him quite a bit. And then... Uh, one of my favorite names in the outfield tonight is uh, David Peralta, who checks in at just $3,400. He's hit right-handed pitching really well uh, in his limited big league career. And Raziel Iglesias struggles in a, uh, with left-handed batters. He's faced 107 this year in his rookie season, allowed a 382 Woba to lefties. So really like David Peralta. A few other names that I'm looking at include, uh, assuming he's back in the lineup today, Preston Tucker at just $3,100. Don't love the matchup with, with Sonny Gray, but uh, too cheap for a cleanup hitter who's just crushed uh, right-handed pitching and kind of sticking with that theme. Speaking of cleanup hitters that are too cheap, $2,700 Andre Ethier. Garrett Cole, another tough matchup, but at $2,700, it's especially in GPPs, not necessarily going to go out of my way to target any of these hitters against top pitchers in cash games, but it's a good way to get some low ownership at some reduced prices in GPPs. And at $2,700, you can do a heck of a lot worse than Andre Ethier. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So like you said, I mean, he's he's a cheap way. Odubel Herrera, who we mentioned earlier, is cheap as well. Um, there are quite a few guys that you feel okay about. Christian Yelich I like a lot, 3,300 against Julio Tehran, the fly ball pitcher who struggles with lefties. Um, I mean, there's just quite a few guys down there at that price. Anthony goes $3,000 um, against Joe Kelly because he's a hitter with a, with a bat in his hand against Joe Kelly, so he's certainly in play. Not a big upside guy, but... Every once in a while, swipe a bag, batting at the top of that order. you got to imagine if they do some damage that he'll uh, he'll get his hand in there at some point. You mean when they do some damage? Yeah. When. And by that, I mean it depends on what time you are, what time zone you <laughs> are, what time that's going to start. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that that's going to wrap things up for us here. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out all of our great content, our optimizer, our cheat sheets at DailyFantasyCafe.com.